I'm back. This is the fourth episode, the longest or most often uh, present guest on this Smart Attack show, Pavel Wipischowski. Thanks for taking the time, Pavel. Thank you, Nick. I am grateful that I'm here back. <laughs> yes, well, it's been and it's been a long while. I don't remember when it was the last episode. But if you have not listened to previous episodes with Pavel that I've recorded in the last three years, these are, I think, foundational to understand uh, the content he's been, he's been sharing and how it really shaped my understanding uh, of many things related to electromagnetic uh, pollution and how it affects us. Maybe we could start, Pavel, by uh, just doing a summary of a few conversations we had. And one of them is, um, I, I think I'm going to try to put it simply in a sentence, would be that it's not just the power level or the intensity of electromagnetic pollution that matters, but many other characteristics that a signal might have. So why don't we start there and kind of establish just this complexity to the topic? Um, I think that the main line would be that uh, my approach to understanding of the impact of the electromagnetic fields is it does not come from the energy uh, measuring alone. So it comes from the from the understanding that the electromagnetic environment on this planet during the time of evolution of the whole life, the human being included, uh, is informationally, it, that there is an information space which is around us on this planet, which uh, shapes our biology. And this is the the main components of this are natural fields on this planet, okay? natural electromagnetic fields, which were present, a little bit changing, but which were present for, we assume, some 4 billion years of, in evolution of life. So most probably the science, I, I would uh, say, mostly agree that the life is not possible without this uh, electromagnetic environment. So uh, this is not really about the power of those uh, signals. I am calling that signals, not the radiation, because it's it's usually very tiny. It's not very uh, it's not very big in in terms of the intensity, but it's first of all sensed by our by our biology and is uh, a very important factor for regulating our bio biology and the proper responses to environment and everything else, in fact. I mean, everything really, <laughs> okay, yeah. what is going on inside us. And now, like um, over 100 years ago, we started to change this environment very dramatically. And uh, this is not only about putting a lot of electromagnetic energy into the environment, into the space, but also by doing that, Many times at the beginning, especially quite unconsciously, because we want the electricity to be transported from the place to place and so on and so forth, we, we seek for a technical solutions for that, for you know economy-based solutions and so on, not knowing really how it affects uh, human body. Uh, we just we just put a lot of artificial signals, which are alien for our for our body first of all and then also a lot of them and and at, at the same or much much higher intensity that the higher that the that the natural signals so what we actually did we we from the information point of view we just jammed what was natural with what 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 is artificial and now our body today is in I think in panic to connect to these natural signals and the symptoms, especially the generative diseases, uh, uh, are simply the the our mm, I mean probably very very dramatic response to to what is going on with our electromagnetic environment, and it's um, it's not like this. This is the this is the the. Mm, disturbance which is going to kill us at the spot 
So this is something which is ongoing and changes really the way uh, I would say human being develops now in all the dimensions. I mean, also mentally and physically and so on and so forth. Uh, so um, saying that we measure the intensity of this or that signal or all the artificial signals together, like with you know wide band meter, and saying that this is only that, that there are only uh, some effects above certain level, it's uh, okay. It's a good start, but it's only a very uh, a very um, simplified view of that because the different signals characteristics will uh, actually um, will will have a very much effect as to the biological uh, biological impact and also we have to consider this biological impact in the context of the individual not yeah. you know not statistically for everyone this is what what medicine does and a lot of science is done in that way that if we do not find you know the average uh, that the average human is impacted then the uh, then the impact does not exist it's actually very i, I would say childish and primitive uh, resolution because if you look into the into the any uh, any era of medicine then you will have people which are more affected by the disease or by the any disturbance and less affected more prone to certain conditions and less prone and and and, and so on and it uh, always it depends on the on the let's say health level but there there will also be um, a lot of individual uh, individual um, conditions attributing to that so well, now saying that we have only you know two percent of electrosensitive people so you know, forget it. Ninety-one uh, and ninety-eight percent is okay. So, so it it cannot be bad for for the people. It's actually quite stupid and idiotic um, because actually those people are showing that there are effects, and even even so, they do not affect you at this time. Uh, it does not mean that they do not exist, and then uh, does not mean that they will not affect you at a certain time when you will be a little bit down by other reasons, by other stressors, and so on. When you will be older, uh, and so on. So yeah. that's uh, that's that's basically my understanding that we are talking about the information space for life. So in per information space for life, which is. Uh, which is electromagnetic environment, which is now horrendously disturbed. Okay, in a ways, in in ways and in intensity, which is uh, I would say all out of control, uh, even by science. Because what I put also that that it's impossible now uh, for science to model the the current exposure in terms of complexity of those signals of any human being. It cannot be modeled in any study. So if, if you read a study now, it's, it's, it's always now only a very narrow, uh, very narrow study, which is showing, OK, if we put rats into the cabin and we put this and that uh, signal like, you know, 3G, then we have these effects on cancer. OK, so you have an NTP study and so on. But th this has nothing to do with the with the daily exposure of every human being on the planet now. Yeah, the the exposure is actually uh, it's actually much 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 more complex, and and then there is a lot of the signals. And uh, actually, I I don't know if any scientist uh, um, can model that now because it's technically impossible. Yeah, it is. So what we what we actually did we we just start putting more and more of wireless communication before we understood the, the biological effects of, of that. And now it's too late because it's such a big business that even if we have a clear signal that there is something wrong with it, then we are too far gone to, 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 to simply to turn back. Yeah, it's a it's a very, very complex situation. And 
Um, mm-hmm. Just thinking about what you said in previous episodes, you talked about the, the signal to noise ratio and it just occurred to me for the first time, each time I talk to you, I have these these new aha moments in my mm-hmm. career. It seems like you, you have such a depth of understanding and you know, there's these NASA studies uh, showing, uh, I don't know if it's NASA or other astronauts where they mm-hmm. wanted to discover how uh, the human biology reacts to being completely shielded from any Earth's frequencies. For example, they wanted to mimic what could happen in space and they discovered very quickly that human biology gets into much trouble on all levels uh, and eventually you become almost crazy when you're completely shielded from natural signals. But then I thought during your last intervention, well, that's kind of what we're doing with everyone to a small degree because people don't realize that all this noise, like the signal is the Earth, so you got human frequency and everything from sunlight to uh, space rays and all the natural frequencies out there, which we could uh, dive into and probably talk about for 12 hours. But it it is... Uh, it is almost uh, deafening the electrosmog that we have around us. So how is the body able to pick up such a minute signal? And you talked about that in previous episodes. So that was just a thought that completely mm-hmm. changed things for me. I realized, you know, we're all astronauts in that experiment to 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 a small degree or maybe to a large degree where we're even though we're connecting to the Earth and we're here, our bodies are a little bit in outer space in some sense or in a soup of very bizarre signals. Like I'm, I'm wondering what our mitochondria are thinking. <laughs> ah, it's exactly like you are saying, because for, we, we, have to, we have to understand that for the, if we have the environment around us, uh, which is signaling to our body, as I, saw, as, as, I, uh, as I said, signaling those very important signals for, the, for our biology. And those signals are not, I mean, there are different ones, but they are not very, very, uh, very, very powerful at least, okay? Sun is quite powerful, so on, but uh, they are not powerful um, at average. And if we simply, this is a, a, a technical problem of transmission line. You have a transmitter, which is the environment, and you have the receiver, which is the human body, okay? And the, if you put the noise in between, then it's simply very, 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 very different situation. You cannot decipher the signal which is coming from environment and differentiated from the signal from the uh, from the uh, artificial fields so the the state of this re- human receiver as i call it so our body is that like like disconnection from the signal at all so it it doesn't really mean it doesn't really matter that the signal exists because it's it's simply jammed and overridden by the artificial signals. So we are really in the same situation as, as astronauts, maybe to the smaller degree, mm-hmm. but for a longer periods of time. Okay. Exactly. Uh, and we have a very good because for the astronauts, and we have very good two examples. One is the the from the let's say history some some years ago, which is Valery Polak- Polyakov which spent over the year in space and it was you know, top health human being when he went out and he went back as a like 40 years older man, okay, with the osteoporosis wow. advanced and great depression and so on. He, it took him several years to, to get back to health. Okay, and he became just, uh, he became a doctor and medical doctor and so on, and he helped people. So after this this experience, and now we have a few years ago we have Scott Kelly. So we had the two twins, Kelly's twins, uh, which one one went to the to the to the space for nearly one year, and the other one, which were the uh, the, the identical twins, the other one left uh, on the on the Earth, and we have now the. The studies of the epigenetic uh, expression of both of those uh, uh, of those twins, and they are completely different. Okay, yeah. so the epigenetics actually sped up to try to find a solution to the environment, which is completely alien and which is uh, out of the uh, of the uh, most of the of the Earth 
electromagnetic fields and their variation because in in saying in in terms of signal we are talking about the variation about the dynamics so we are not talking about only about like for example we have um, we have uh, um, schumann resonance field but the schumann resonance field is not the same at the night time and at the daytime is yeah. different okay so this those changes are also felt by uh, by the human body okay the same with the with the magnetic field of the air it varies from place to place but it also varies during the daytime and the, and the nighttime and those little variations are felt by the human body and they are the, uh, and these are the additional signals additional to light uh, additional signals which which simply uh, guide our biology what to do when to do what is the proper response to what is happening and so on and so forth okay so um, we by putting a lot of a lot of artificial signals which are transferring data which can be read by us by computers and so on but they are completely alien for the for the human body so the problem is that we do have um, mm, do have evolutionary responses to to heat, to to a lot of sunlight, to a lot of different things, to even to cold and some other disasters, because it's it's in history of our genes and somehow they they those who survived they learned how to deal with that, but we do not have anything, anything uh, about the this kind of electromagnetic uh, fields, so. What our bodies are doing now is actually looking for a solution to that, to that environment. Uh, they are seeking the solution. And how the seeking is going on, it's the epigenetics, so the expression of different genes not used before and so on, it's upregulated. And quite randomly, but this is how evolution does it. Okay. So Maybe we find a solution evolutionary, uh, but usually in evolution history, finding a solution of survival is actually uh, an exception. The rule is extinction. Yeah. All right. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I am not sure if we find a solution if we, if we, do, not, uh, if we do not stop doing that for, uh, for a period longer, but, but probably we... We are not going to learn much because uh, because and we we go stupid uh, for for much longer because we what we did actually we exposed the whole um, the whole population to it so we 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 cannot we we don't have anyone to compare yeah. okay we don't have now anybody really anybody which we can compare how how it uh, how the health is going on without electromagnetic fields exposure so only natural field and we cannot and we cannot restore it actually so we cannot really find the difference and probably we would never know how the life could be without this electromagnetic pollution yeah exactly we don't have probably a, not a separate um reality where we never rolled out this technology right and we look at the planet and compare so a comparison group it's it's funny uh professor johansson from sweden holy johansson told me in a recent interview that he, he tried to get together that study with a small town in sweden where they would close out uh, or turn off all the cell phone towers and basically go zero wireless for five i think it was something like five years but uh it got denied i think it was almost funded it got denied because it's a human experiment go figure how how <laughs> incredible is that oh no it's a human experiment we're gonna uh blast you yeah. with fewer damaging electro pollution and it's uh oh no this this breaches ethics Anyway, I won't even get uh, how this compares to what happened in the last year and a half with uh, uh, it's, it's... with pandemic and stuff like that. But I mean, it's it's ludicrous that uh, uh, it's we're, we're not open to doing that. It's it's just mad. But it's you know those. This is something which which goes on for last you know one and a half year during this pandemic that 
that the people like you and me just and probably all of your counselors just realize that not only though we, we get those responses those, those ludicrous responses to the to, to such attempts but they are accepted but they are accepted yeah. by majority of people you know yeah. and this is something which I I, I I must admit I I thought better about the about the human being before the pandemic. No, I, I thought that human being is, is actually still a little bit homo sapiens, but I found out that it's not. <laughs> yeah, I, f I find that uh, society has been, well, in certain parts of the world, right? It's a Western world has go been going a little bit crazy. And uh, sometimes, you know, I'm a little bit uh, shook up when I listen to Dr. Martin Paul from four years ago, the first few interviews I listened to him. And it was a bit like, this guy who in the scientific community some scientists do not like him and that's okay because uh there's a healthy debate and you know so some scientists say oh he's uh he, he's um i don't know the like the apocalypse man because he, he makes extreme st statements that's based on his assessment of the science and he defends his position have been since uh and i cannot wait to talk to him again but the reality is that he's been saying for four years everyone will go crazy with these levels and uh, are we seeing uh, that uh, society is backtracking on the level of iq and and the amount of fear and anxiety and nonsense that's been going on tells me sometimes i wake up in the morning i look around and i see what's been happening in society and how accepting people are about crazy ideas and uh, crazy situations that make no rational sense and I tell myself, well, it's one of the factors, but we're all going crazy. Like this is the 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 dark ages in some sense. It, it's just sad to to have that that that, that thought. But uh, I'm like, well, there's a lot of people who are rational thinkers that I know of, but the majority is um, just following along. And and it's it doesn't mean they're not intelligent. It means that they've been entrained to. Um, think in a very straightforward way and not necessarily think for themselves and then and then there's leaders that I think are simply mad at this point or have mental issues <laughs> I, I don't know what else well, you know it's it's I think it's complex of course but yeah. um, I I always uh, try to underline that this is uh, that this majority you said that it's being entrained into certain thinking I I would rather see it a little bit differently because there is also a, tr um, you know, that there is also a question if you allow yourself to be entrained into this. Okay, mm. so you now you you have to allow this to happen to to your thinking. It's not like it's it's you know it's an involuntary reaction. You have to choose to to for example to to believe into commercials instead of digging in, into knowledge, okay? Yeah. You have to choose that. Uh, it's convenient. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's, it's, it's true. It's much more convenient to, to just, uh, you know, see this or this expert on TV or, or on YouTube show and just, you know, if this is an expert and he's making good money and he is famous, then probably it's true. Uh, it's a much tougher way to get into the knowledge, get into the science, try to find out your own views, your own opinions, try to find out that the, the, the issue is much more complex and there is no clear cut solution to that and no, no, you know, so binary truth, the only truth and the not truth and the lie. It's, uh, I call it PCR thinking, which is primitive childish religion. So <laughs> then you have only one truth and you have, you know, lies and the one truth yeah. and lies, and and the people are are are, are thinking that that way, and they uh, and I am saying that there is always at the deeper level there are always more truths. The truth is always in plural, yeah. and you 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 have to you have to really uh, you know accept this complexity uh, because we are complex beings now.
and life is is very very complex and we actually are just scratching the surface of marvels of life biology and understanding of that so saying that i've got the truth you know and this is the only truth and so on and i have a good solution for that it's and but 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 people like to buy it you know they like buy solutions like those all people which are going consumers going to the market and they hear about some problem and they want to buy a solution pay for it done I am good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It makes you feel powerful. So, it's like yeah. I paid for it. I I fix yeah. it. And yeah. y- you know this is a perfect segue. Uh the 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 first part was pretty doom and gloom. I want to switch to something even more controversial because what the heck. <laughs> uh you know, exactly. we're going to talk uh, we have to talk about EMF harmonizers. Um so just to I have a first episode on that podcast going to be part one of this interview where I give my perspective on the harmonizers and the the very short version is I I don't think that they're marketed in a way that is fair in almost all situations where uh, you buy a chip you put it on your phone or you buy a pyramid or something you put it in your living room and now you're a hundred percent protected from all electro pollution forever it some claims are as ludicrous as that I don't uh, agree that um, they should say that. I don't think the science proves that. I don't see the scientific community jumping on those and saying, yay, we fixed the the EMF problem and everyone's going to be healthy now. So what's your perspective on this, on um, how they're marketed and uh, do, do these things even work? Because there are so many things on the market. Like I've been contacted by over a hundred companies in the last four years to become an influencer, you know, uh, and, and, and sell this on my show and make a lot of money. I could have made, to be perfectly honest, I could have made a hundred thousand dollars out of affiliate commissions in the last five years because people love to hear about those and they think it's a magic pill. So what do you think about those? Oh, I, I don't know where to start, actually. Yeah, it's it's rough. <laughs> because but, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, nah, yeah, of, of course, I agree with you 100% and even more uh, that it's not you know, fair to market uh, things like that to the people with, with all those claims, uh, which are simply complete nonsense okay if you if you understand that we have an electromagnetic environment like i said before which is signaling to our body and this environment is actually polluted in a horrendous way and how come you can put a sticker on the phone and and reverse it and you cannot even and you cannot even uh you cannot even show it by by objective measurements, okay? If you put a meter to the sticker, th- that nothing shows, okay? Let's let's agree on that. I measured, I think, dozens of those devices, and in terms of those of those passive ones, which are just a sticker, a, a piece of plastic, or crystal, or whatever it's said, uh, it doesn't have a chance uh, to affect this uh, this uh, electrosmog. Okay, this electromagnetic radiation. It, it doesn't have a chance because if it does, then we have to throw to the garbage all the physics from the beginning of human human evolution. Okay, the physics just does, doesn't work if we if if we can if we can affect by this sticker the electromagnetic radiation in in any measurable way. Right. That's that's the first thing. It's if you believe in the sticker. Okay. Then we have the science of psychoneuroimmunology neuro- that it might work yeah. in a way that your belief is creating a certain response in the body, which is good enough for uh, showing even on this, on that measurements like HRV or something like that, that you, that you are more relaxed than before because you know that you, that you did something for you and you believe it was good. Yeah. But if you but if you try to compare it to to the measurements, then it cannot be shown. Okay, then it's then the story be behind those harmonizers is like you know we are modifying the spin of electrons. But if those guy is is this or that is able to modify the spin of electrons in the proximity of the person, 
then he should get a Nobel Prize because nobody <laughs> nobody can. Okay. Yeah. And and then they told then they tell about you know the the commercial secret and all those bullshits uh, uh, about it and not saying how it's how it's going to harmonize. And I pointed out in the correspondence to you that the first thing is that, that the assumption that you can put a lot of garbage into the electromagnetic environment and then you can locally harmonize it, so make it okay, it's just just this idea is, is, is simply, you know, quite idiotic if you if you think about it okay it's it's just like you can locally by putting a sticker or this or that material you can reverse the uh, the what what is uh, reverse of uh, the the garbage which is which is going on into the environment and it doesn't matter how much of this garbage what is the characteristic of it and so on it even doesn't matter that this that this level of of pollution still exists if you measure it yeah. It doesn't matter. It can magically reverse it, and you are simply, you know, simply well now. And you, if you just take it with you, if you buy it, then you are then you are well. So this is. Uh, I am just, you know, from from my point of view, I am just amazed how people can believe that. Yeah. And, and then we are going back what we said just just a few minutes before. Okay? It's it's just a consumer mind which is not thinking. It's 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 just it turned into into thinking that if something is marketed and if someone is is successfully marketing and then other people buy it, then it might be it, then it have to be good. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> it just it just uh, it just works this the way. And there is also another type of this harmonizers which are the active ones so you put it into you plug it in into the into the socket and then they they somehow affect the the um, electromagnetic environment in ways which harmonizes them but here the problem is nearly the same uh, i would say nearly because uh, i have clients electro highly electrosensitive clients which were actually experienced much much uh, problems with those devices. I mean, when they turn it in, they then went, they went down completely. They went wow. so much worse that it was uh, that it was uh, completely out of question for them. And it was, uh, for example, the the device for the car, okay, to to take out the the um, the pollution in the electromagnetic pollution in the car. And this lady just just called me that she plugged it in and uh, it it was after I I was not able to influence their, the, her decision before yeah. <laughs> it was just after her experience and he plugged it in and and just went horrible okay so uh, so it it creates some field which those uh, those uh, marketers of those devices think that can harmonize something. Uh, but it's actually working some, uh, sometimes at least it's working the other way. Okay. So well, what I say is those people, I, I try to talk to, to some of them or correspond to them, but, but I cannot get, you know, anywhere. I cannot get, cannot get any meaningful discussion. Okay, so my assumption is those guys behind that is just just marketers. They just want money and uh, nothing else because they do not understand what they are doing. And uh, and I think most of them know what they are doing. That they are doing simply uh, simply cheating and uh, and and mind laundering. But no, who cares? Okay, I do what it sells, and you know. So this is for me. It's. I, I am not saying that I am not interested in 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 hearing and in measuring those those solutions and so on. Maybe there is something and some some mechanism which which is overlooked, which can do something in in that respect. But I do not believe it can harmonize something uh, really, because if it harmonizing, that the assumption is that we know what is harmonious. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> This is the one thing. The other thing is that, that we know, that the other assumption is that we know how to manipulate those, those uh, uh, EMFs in the environment to make it harmonious. Okay? How to manipulate them, how to change them 
to make them harmonious. And without well, hampering well, the signal, with, yeah, without 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 you know shielding the signal exa or exactly you know, or absorbing the signal or so on. So yeah. which is which can be objectively measured. Okay, so the, those two assumptions are from from nowhere. Okay, they are they are in the thin air. There is no study behind it and nothing. And even if they they claim that they have the reaction. Of the, for example, of the heart uh, variability um, rates, uh, which is a kind of a, a kind of a measure of autonomic response, uh, um, uh, of autonomic uh, response uh, of the nervous system. Uh, so the response of the autonomic nervous system. Uh, it's 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 amazes me how the how you know how simplified or primitive the the, the 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 human thinking is because it's like that the the hrv is actually quite established technique for uh assessing the state of the autonomic nervous system okay it's it's quite established it's cheap this is the one point <laughs> it's quite cheap uh, and then many scientists use that and i can uh, i can even show you in some you know, i can even uh, I even have some studies some polish studies published uh, published uh, on pubmed and so on uh, which are using hrv to assess the impact of electromagnetic fields mm. on the on the body and in this respect, everything is fine because if you see the change in HRV because of the exposure to electromagnetic fields, then you have, and th the same change is not existent without the electromagnetic fields, then you know that the electromagnetic fields affect human nervous system. Okay, so, so it means the human nervous system, first of all, senses those those fields and then trying to react to that. Okay. Yeah. So these are two things. And this is actually a proof for the impact of electromagnetic environment, because there is, if there is a change in the, in the autonomic response, uh, then it's, uh, it's, it's an impact of electromagnetic fields. No question about it. It's actually a proof of that. So using the HRV or other similar technique, for that reason, it's actually very good and very sound scientifically, and those studies are okay. But what those marketers of those devices are doing, they are assessing now the change of your, of your uh, autonomic response uh, in, uh, for adding to the polluted environment, for adding their harmonizer, okay? So this is something completely different. Because first of all, to assess that, it's, you, you have to tell what response is proper. So it's evolutionary proper. What response to the, to the, because usually you have HRV response to electromagnetic stress, you have the stress response in autonomic responses. That's fine. And the stress response, it's, I believe, and I think all the science now, the sound science is, uh, agrees with that, it's the stress response to electromagnetic pollution, it's the proper response of the body. Like the proper response for the body to the bacterial infection is the stress response. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you All don't right. get it, so you, if you yeah. get a, a strong infection and you don't get the stress response, you don't get the inflammation, then, exactly. then you're in trouble. Exactly. So yeah. the, the stress response is actually the proper response to the stressor in the environment because it sh it's, it's actually shows us that we need to do something, show the body that we need to do something with it. We have to fight. All right. If you have, for example, videos with Wim, Wim Hof, you know, just shooting himself the the, uh, the some bacteria into the into the bloodstream, then and doing it under the measurement, then his cortisol level goes sky high, you know, just much higher than the average person, and then the infection is gone. So you want to you want to just switch off this stress response. Do you really? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. it's kind of the, the opposite. You want a, a very strong <laughs> response, but controlled. 
and yeah, then exactly. uh, that's controlled what you want. Yeah. and adequate. So to yeah. the adequate stressor, the, the the response should be adequate. Okay, yeah. because you can have an allergy, and allergy is actually an adequate strong response. So you have the stressor which is not threatening your life, and then you have the response which is threatening actually you, but not the 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 harmless the harmless substance. So yeah. so the, the the response should be timely and should be adequate. Okay, but actually switching it off, it's like you 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 are under stress and you take tranquilizer. Okay. So right? it's it's not a solution, and especially yeah. it's not a long-term solution. So if we are talking about the chronic stress, that even if they can show such an effect on HRV, that you know you have stress response in in response to your Wi-Fi router, and then you get this uh, harmonizer, and then your stress response goes to relax, that is not a solution. And it does not mean that the impact is gone. And that's, it's not. that's my big problem with it. I've been you know, talking. You, you can have yeah. any study. You can have Martin Paul's study. You can have uh, Dimitri Panagopoulos study, which is actually even broader in that. And, yeah. and you, can, you, you, can see, you can see that these are connected. So that those levels of fields are connected to the disruption of the ionic channels on the cell membrane. Yeah. So this is this. This value of, of electromagnetic radiation at this frequency, at this characteristic, and you have the disturbance of the of the ion flow through the cell membrane. All right. So it doesn't matter if you harmonize it in the environment or not, if you cannot lower this this stress, I mean to, to take it to take it away, to shield or something, then it's still going on. You know, the reality is actually this part of, of our existence which works despite we believe it or not you know and <laughs> it's just like that and i am also not aware of any study uh showing even that what we have thought about that that this that the stress response from emf goes to the relaxed state which is actually a scientific study with uh, with uh, you know double blind study so now, now, as soon as those people know that they have this harmonizer on or in their hand or on their phone, and then they measure their reaction that, that, that they relaxed on, on, on HRV, there is no proof at all. You know, we have the science of psychoneuroimmunology. We know that this happens, okay, that, 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 that this works this way. But this does not, does not, provide any solution to the chronic electromagnetic stress is actually quite reverse and on both levels physical because it gives you a relaxed response in an environment which actually stress response is 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 the proper one because the first you know the the, the first reason we have the stress response is is run away yeah <laughs> okay it's run away yeah. simply and and the this is the good response to to the electromagnetic uh, to the electromagnetically polluted environment if we feel it and it goes into stress we we know that something is 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 very bad for us at least in this environment and we should run away we should do something about it just to survive okay so this and and turning it off you know, and you know, you, you can do it by alcohol. You no, know? you can do it by drugs. And but is this a proper, you know, long term solution? And is this any solution in that? Now, I, 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 I know many electrosensitive people who actually found out by their own experiments that they feel much better when they drink, mm. you know, because the stress level it goes down. Yeah, I understand. So, but you know. Is this a solution you should, to this should problem? It, maybe one night, just to calm <laughs> your nerves. But I mean, maybe if you but overdo then the it. Next, yeah. But the, the, then the next morning, you are, you know, you are yeah. worse off to, to deal with it. Okay. A exactly. So, yeah. so, so th this is basically, you know, this is not about this producer of those things and th the, that producer or something, uh, you know, until I see anything which, which can be, you know, 
put into this frame of, of, of references, which I just described, and just keep it, you know, in it. I am I'm very curious to, to, to find out, but you know, as so far I have not found anything like that. And I know and I believe you that you can make a lot of money marketing that. Yeah. And this is actually this is actually crazy. You know, this is this is crazy because people don't like to think now. And you know, the old saying is that thinking is against business, and I think it is. Yeah. And that's unfortunate. And I mean, I'm not here to to play necessarily the the blame game. And this is not an episode to to slam on companies or even people who endorse this stuff. I mean, I think I think most people are trying to do their best. Some marketers, I've been I've been there in my career, even back several years back. I was heavy in marketing and I even promoted stuff that I did not feel good about and uh, I had to stop because ethically speaking I was uh, it really hurt me personally so I know that marketers can twist truths to the point of creating white lies and selling stuff like I know I know this this entire game uh, of making money and it's very uh, attractive to certain people so I just want to say I mean yeah it's if people want to make money it's just the problem I have is is that really the message it sends people, and if if people buy chips or harmonizers that we don't even uh, know for sure work, instead of uh, trying to change their phone habits and uh, cut down on on Wi-Fi use and use Ethernet cables and things like that, well, I think that ethically speaking, we're in a very very dangerous spot and. Just even even the the liability around those is is very crazy. I was chatting with Brian Hoyer, who's my co-teacher mm -hmm. on my latest course, and Brian is exactly aligned with this discussion, where he said, "Well, I mean, if if someone uses a phone with a chip on it all his life and then gets a brain tumor, and it was supposed to be protected, can you sue the company that made the chip? I mean." It's 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 kind of very very dangerous uh, business because we know that the tumors can kill and it's one of the most uh, potent effect of electropollution very close to the face is killing you. Uh, so anyway, that's just a, a, a side note. But you know, I was looking. Yeah, uh, I, did you read the disclaimer to the to those to those chips? Probably they <laughs> they are they, they are probably well, protect their asses. They are well but... defended. You know, the, yeah, the, this yeah. is something what they do. You now it's it's like I call the you know I call the MBA so the. Master of Business Administration, I call it Masters of Bullshit Advertisement. So this is <laughs> this is the, the example. 